Hello everyone. In this video, we will be factoring polynomial function using polydoku, and this is the second part. I will put the link of the first part in the description box below. In this part, we are given a function and we are supposed to determine all of the factors. Since our highest exponent here is 4, this means that there are 4 factors for this polynomial. So then I can go ahead and write four parentheses here. So what are we what are we doing in this video is that we're trying to figure out what are these four factors that we put in here such that if we multiply these th four, it will come out to this polynomial function right there. Please remember that there are some steps that we need to follow in order that we can factor this out. The first step is to determine all of the possible roots using the rational zero theorem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write um, S1 right here. So um, there is another video on how to determine all the possible roots using the rational zero theorem. I will put the link of that video in the description box below. Looking at this using the rational zero theorem, this is our P and this is our Q. So then we go ahead and determine the factors of P and Q. So the factors of positive minus 6 would be plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, and plus minus 6. The factors of 2 would be 1 and 2. In order that we can get all the possible um, roots for this polynomial right there, we are going to divide each of these values on the numerator to each of the values in the denominator, which means that we are going to divide this positive minus 1 over 1 and positive 1 minus 1 over 2. So just by looking at this, we can go ahead and write all the possible zeros or the possible roots. So a uh, positive negative 1 over 1 is a positive minus 1. And then positive negative 1 over 2 is a plus minus 1 half. And then we do the same thing for the next one right here. We have a positive minus 2 to the 1. And then positive minus 2 to the 2 here. So then we go ahead and write um, positive minus 2 over 1 is just positive minus 2. And then we have positive negative 2 over 2 is just plus minus one, so I don't need to write that. Then we move on to the uh, plus minus three. So we go plus minus three divided by one and plus minus three divided by two. So then that would be plus minus three and then plus minus three divided by two is plus minus three halves. And then we go ahead and do the um, plus minus six, so that would be over one and then over two. So then we go ahead and write this as it's going to be plus minus 6, and this is going to be uh, plus minus 6 over 2 is just uh, plus minus 3, so we already have written that, so we don't need to rewrite it again. So that's the first step. We need to determine all the possible roots. So these are all the possible roots that we can use in order that we can factor this. So this... Um, Rational zero theorem is trying to narrow down all the possible numbers out there since there are infinite numbers that we can have. So then um, this theorem is trying to narrow down all the possible numbers that we can test. So after we're done with the first step, we're ready to move on to the second step. The second step is to use polydoku to test which one of these roots are the factors. So then we go ahead and move on to the Second step, so I'm just going to use this one right here. So I'm going to label this as S2 for the second step. So what are we going to do is we will use this original equation that we have right here. And then we're going to divide it by each of the factors. We're going to divide each one of these. Now I'll give you a trick. We will start with the integer first. And then after we, we've exhausted all the integers and there, none of them are factors, then we can go to the... Um, fractions but let's take the integer first so we are going to test if so this is test if that is x we start with plus one so x plus one is a factor 
Okay, in order that we can test this again, we are, we're using x plus one, and then if this doesn't work, then we go to x minus one, and then we go x plus two, x minus two, until we can find factors. So we test x plus one, and then we are going to use the polydoku for this. So x plus one will be divided to this. So that would be, this would be our number that we divide by x minus one. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to create six, um, vertical um, lines okay so I've created um, this table right here so it's gonna be um, six vertical lines and there are three rows and then the one that we write just like how we did with the other videos this one's right here will be placed at the bottom so this would be Okay, and then this x plus one will be placed right here. So that's x plus one, and then this one is an x right there. We don't write, we don't, we don't need to write anything on it. And then again, we use polydoku, so we are going to remember that this one is gonna go here. So this would come out to x to the fourth. And so we need to determine what number do we write here so that we get two uh, x to the fourth. And so that should be two x to the third and then we multiply this so that's 2x to the third and then remember that we are supposed to subtract these two together and then we put it here so then we subtract it so that would be negative 7x cubed minus 2x cubed is a negative 9x cubed and so this one should come out negative 9x squared and so multiply this that is negative 9x squared we subtract these two again and whatever is the difference we put that in here so again this is 4x squared minus negative x uh, squared would be a positive 13x squared so that's 13x squared and then we go ahead and write this as 13x so that if you have 13x times x is 13x squared and so this is 13x right here and then again we are going to subtract these two and then whatever the answer is we put that in here so 7 minus 7x minus 13x is a negative 6x and so we have a negative 6 right here and so negative 6 times 1 is a negative 6. And then again, we are going to subtract these two. So that means that is negative 6 minus negative 6 is a 0. So then this means that whatever answer we have here will be placed in here. And that's a 0. Since we have a 0 um, remainder here, please remember the factor theorem. If a polynomial p of x is divided by a factor x minus a, then the remainder is zero. Since this is a zero, we can go ahead and say that x plus one is one of the factor. So I can go ahead and write that down here. Okay, so then I can go ahead and write x plus one right here. So that's x plus one. So that's the first factor that we did. And we need to figure out all the other three factors here. Now, what are we gonna do next? We tested the x plus one. So the next thing that we're gonna do would be x minus one. So then I am going to um, use another paper right here to show the work for um, x minus one. So I'm just gonna rewrite this. Okay. So we are testing if x minus 1 is a factor. Again, we are testing each of these until we can exhaust it and we can find all of the factors. So then what are we going to do since we already have found that x plus 1 is a factor? So this means that we are going to use this um, number right here or this quotient right here to the next one right here. So then I can go ahead and then whatever the answer here, since this is a factor, we divide it by x minus one. So then I can go ahead and count one, two, three, four. So I'm going to make five vertical lines. Okay, and then once I've created the table, I'm going to write this one down here and then I'm gonna divide it by x minus one. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, write it up here.
what I would do next is to use polydoku to determine if x minus 1 is a factor. It's pretty much the same thing as what I did over here. So I'm just going to show the work up here. Okay, since I found out that the remainder, when I divided whatever answer that I have there, when I divided it, it came out to have a remainder of zero. This means that x minus one is a factor. Okay, so then I can go ahead and write that up here. So this would be x plus one, we did that and it's a factor. x minus one is also a factor, so I'm gonna write x minus one. And then I need to figure out what are these remaining uh, parentheses that I need to write in here. And so this will be part of the third step. The third step is when you get to the second degree, so the one that I'm referring to is this. So what, what we did, at the beginning was it was um, all the way to the fourth power and we reduce it down to the third power and since it was a factor we reduce it down to the second power so on the second power for the third step when you get to the second degree use either box and diamond or the quadratic equation to factor this out so i'm going to show the work um up here using the box and diamond so then that would be so we're using this one already so I'm just gonna label this as step three. So we're going to use the uh, diamond first. So the one that we write on the diamond would be the, the product between the first and the last. So that is 12x squared. And then we have the middle term that's negative seven X. So we need to figure out what are these factors. So these numbers would be negative four X and negative three X. And so we are going to use the um, area model and then in this area model, we are going to write the first term right here to x squared, the last term six, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and write the negative three x here, and then the negative four x, the one in red. And so we can go ahead and write the factors. This is gonna be two x and x. So if I multiply two x times x is two x squared. This should be a negative two. So if I multiply two x times negative two is negative four x, and this is a negative three. So negative three times x is negative three x, negative three times negative two is a positive six, which means that the factors here would be these two right here. So these are the remaining factors. So then we can go ahead and say that the remaining factors are x minus two and two x minus three. So then I can fill that in here for the rest of the parts. That's x minus two and we have two x minus 3. So when we multiply all of these using the area model, it will come out to this form. So this is our factored form. Okay, now if we want to know what are the roots of this one right here, we can use the zero product property. We can go ahead and write the roots. Let's see if all of these roots are actually found on the possible roots that we have down here. So first we use the zero product property, so that would be x plus one equals zero. So that means our first root is a negative one, because again, we use the zero product property. So that's x plus one equals zero, so minus one from both sides, so we get x equals negative one, or pretty much we switch the sign of this, so that's the first root. So negative one is one of the roots. Next is a positive one. That's also one of the roots right here. And we have a positive two. Since again, we switched this, so that's positive two is one of the roots. And then this one right here would become a positive three halves. So that would be a positive three halves. And positive three halves is also one of the roots. So this is in factored form. And these are the roots of this polynomial function. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.